Yep, I know exactly what you're thinking. Tank, why have you made this video? Was it so you can simply buy yourself some KFC, like the last three KFC videos you've made? Well, um, it was. I might have forgotten to order KFC before I started recording this video, but that was the intention. So, yeah, maybe next time. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and for those of you who are already fans of heavy metal music in general, you probably already know who this strange character is. But for the uninitiated, oh boy, you're in for a wild ride today. Get ready for guitar shredders and shredded chicken. The best two things I could possibly think of at that one time. So let's get to the bare bones of the matter, shall we? Who the hell is this person? And why are they wearing a bucket of KFC on their head? Brian Patrick Carroll is an American musician, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist acclaimed for his guitar playing and collaborating with some of music's biggest names such as Iggy Pop, Serge Tankian, Bootsy Collins, and for a time was even a member of the band Guns N' Roses when Axel and his Merry Men toured and performed. He has also been able to dip his toes into the world of film, writing, performing music for films such as Jaws 2, Mortal Kombat, Beverly Hills, Last Action Hero, and of course was the musician who played the lead guitar in the almighty track for the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, Firebird. This man is not only incredibly talented, but also very busy, because at the time of recording this video, he has recorded, and I shit you not, 325 albums. Yes, I'm gonna repeat that once more. This artist has made 325 albums. Busy, busy guy. I just can't think of anyone who has the time to be able to do that, let alone make albums which are actually good, rather than just doing anything. Yes, so that is a bit of a background as to what this guy does in his day-to-day -day life. But I know what you're asking, and of course it's because it's in the title of the video, what's with the getup? What's with the bucket? What's with the mask? It's all a bit strange. Well, let me tell you. Otherwise known as Buckethead, this artist performs wearing a KFC bucket on his head, with an orange bumper sticker slapped on the side reading Funeral. And of course, the white mask inspired by Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. So yeah, truly an outstanding character. On first impression, probably not so much for his skill, but mainly because in a row of musicians, he's the one that's gonna stand out for being a little bit different than what you'd expect. The story given on the official Buckethead origin story was that he was raised by chickens and one day, these chickens attacked Buckethead, scarring his face. And in order to hide his disfigured face, he would hide away from the world behind a white mask. A mask which just so happened to be the same mask on the film of Halloween 4, but that's besides the point. So he would spend his days in the chicken coop and would go and spy on horror films that were being showed at a local drive through theatre, and occasionally playing guitar at the same time, honing his skills. The reason for the chicken, however, on the head, is a little bit stranger, however, as apparently one day a bucket of KFC chicken was thrown into the chicken coop. A bucket head, seeing the bucket, felt sorry for the chicken and tried to piece it back together. But there's only so many times that you can try and piece back together a deep fried chicken. So, unsuccessful, he decided to wear the bucket on his head as a show of respect for his lost brethren. The chicken that was just made into a KFC zinger meal. To cement his legacy, a ballad was written by Les Claypool and Buckethead himself, which reads as follows. He was born in a coop, raised in a cage. Children fear him, critics rage. He's half alive, he's half dead. Folks just call him Buckethead. So yeah, that was the apparent official version of how he came to be, how Buckethead became Buckethead. That's all well and good, and honestly I don't know really what you expected, but in Guitar Player magazine in 1996, Buckethead had an interview and he explained what was probably the actual reason as to how he became Buckethead. Well, surprisingly there was no real deep meaning, from 
what I can tell, anyway. In 1998, he would watch the 1998 movie, Halloween 4, and would be inspired to go out and buy the actual mask he saw on the screen. This must have been pretty impactful for him to go out and buy the same mask he'd seen in the movie. But this clearly wasn't enough, as something else so profound would happen on the same evening. That he was sat at home alone, eating a bucket of KFC. I was eating it, and I put the mask on and then the bucket on my head. I went to the mirror, I just said, bucket head. That's bucket head right there. And it was just one of those things. After that, I wanted to be that thing all the time. So if you wanted to become a professional musician, most people would go for something which they would consider professional, something which isn't quite as absurd as wearing a mask and a bucket of KFC chicken, which is not the first thing I would think of when I think of a professional musician. However, when you listen to him play, I think when you consider what someone is as a professional musician, he's near the top of the damn list. You need to listen to him. This guy is incredibly talented. As a matter of fact, many people have even gone on record to say that they believe Buckethead is one of the most skilled guitar players of a generation, which is a bold statement to say. Buckethead would enter into a number of competitions, including Guitar Player magazine, in which Brian would get the runners-up spot, with the editor for the magazine themselves saying the following. An astonishingly skilled guitarist and bassist, he demonstrates post-Paul Gilbert speed and accuracy, filtered through very kinky harmonic sensibilities. His psychotronic, demonic edge is very, very far removed from the cliches of classical metal and rock. A real talent to watch, also known as Buckethead. He would go on to play with a number of different bands, including an audition in 1993 to replace John Vashanti in the Red Hot Chili Peppers. So you must think that you're pretty good at playing guitar if you're able to go up and make an audition for a band like that. As I mentioned before, Buckethead has a stellar track record, working with music's biggest artists, producing iconic pieces of music, and generally being able to work in many different styles and genres, from rock, metal, jazz, ambient tones, bluegrass, you name it. Whilst Buckethead has got many fingers in many pies, he always goes back to the fact that he loves playing music for his fans. That is pretty much his number one goal. The guitar shredder is so well in tune with his guitar in fact, he actually dubbed a new way to play guitar called nubbing. And I mean it's hard for me to explain it, so I'm just going to show you a clip here. <laughs> to tap his fingers on the front of the fretboard like that with such quick succession creates such a unique sound and it's something which he's carried forward into a lot of his music. It's hard for me to explain how talented this guy actually is and I know that a lot of people who saw this video for the first time and may not know who Buckethead is thought that he was just a crazy guy. I mean he probably is but don't let that detract away from the fact that he actually makes really good music. And really, all I can suggest is after this video, go and listen to some of it. And some personal recommendations for me, if you've never heard him before, is to go ahead and listen to Soothsayer, Whitewash, and Final Wars. And that is Buckethead, in some shape or form. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. So when I told you earlier on that he has made hundreds of albums and he's made so many songs in his career so far, how long do you think it would take to listen to every single one? Well. I saw a comment online of someone that has actually calculated this, so I do have the answer for you, just in case you were wondering. Basically, to listen to every song he's ever made on his entire discography from start to finish, you are gonna be listening to his music, with no sleep, bear in mind, for over one whole week. Meaning that 24-7, no sleep, 
No rest, nothing. You listen to this constantly and <laughs> to provided you can stay awake that long, you can truly listen to every single song he's ever made. So um, good luck with that. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.